Okay, so we're gonna take these and run them exactly to where they're gonna go. And then for these, so like this guy right here, this is my shielded wire. On the inside of this, we've got two wires. One is gonna be for the actual trigger and one's gonna be a sensor ground. And for this, this is, a, this is already basically ready to go. I'm gonna shield it and everything, of course, just to make it look all pretty, but it's already ready to go. So whenever I set this to where it's gonna be at, I'm already, I'm just gonna snip it. Also, you're gonna make sure that you don't have them as tight as they can possibly be. Leave a little slack, whether or not, you know, they do a little bit of uh, dangles underneath the intake. Don't make it so drastic, but leave a little bit of, leave a little bit of dangling underneath the intake and stuff. So that way you can have a little bit of room to work with and it's not pulling on your wiring because you don't want that. Pop this guy up right here between the runner. And this is going to be cam sensor. So cam sensor for in. Now we're going to take the crank sensor. We're going to do the exact same thing. Like I said, my crank sensor is all the way under the front of the engine, all the way down, hiding. So you guys will notice this red wire. This is actually my five volt, and uh, I will probably end up cutting this. This isn't going to be going to uh, anything uh, crazy, but you can also use the full length of this if you have a sensor or whatever that's really far into the engine that you can like actually run to. And I do like the idea of having a fuel pressure. So I'm going to be converting my regulator to have an actual sensor on it, and then I have a I have an oil pressure gauge for my uh, for my oil for like my oil pressure, and then I will use the auxiliary out, and I will run it to the ECU so I can have a visible gauge and then also a physical gauge and then uh, the ECU gauge. So this guy right here, I'm gonna just throw right here next to the to the fuel pressure regulator. I don't have an adapter for that just yet. I need to get an adapter to make a eighth inch NPT work on those ORB fitting. If you're running VVTI on this kind of ECU, you're gonna have to use an auxiliary. This is auxiliary six, and we're gonna set it to VVTI. We're gonna run it under, run it up to that connector there on the VVTI gear. Remember whenever we were talking about the sensor ground wire, about the sensor ground wire that I snipped off at the beginning, and then I put the crimp, I put the crimp in there with the heat shrink, and I left this long piece here. Typically, my TPS is the farthest sensor on the engine that accepts a sensor ground and then also a five volt. And as you guys can see here, we have the five volt wire also. So the TPS will accept the actual TPS wire and then a five volt and then a sensor ground. So typically I'll leave these guys completely long, and then if I need to tap into it, because these are two wires that will feed multiple sensors, if I need to tap into it, I can tap into it along the way. But these right here will be going to the TPS, and if for whatever reason it needs a five volt somewhere, such as a sensor for fuel pressure or oil pressure, we can tap into it to use that. It is a nest, there is no issue with that. Uh, it is just basically a reading to determine uh, different values. So five volt is a little bit different than 12 volt and uh, it uses ground and stuff as metrics. So these guys right here will both go to the TPS. So we'll have three wires going to the TPS. And uh, once we get everything all situated, we're gonna zip tie everything and make it all nice and tight. And then we will start snipping to length on each of these things. Let's go up under here, take this five volt wire right here. Okay, and there's the TPS. We've got analog in. This is gonna be the analog that will go to the fuel pressure regulator. We've got the IAT obviously going to go to the IAT, which I need to get my bung. I 
Okay, so my IAT is gonna come all the way down over here and I'm gonna have to get my bung put in, but it should be no issue. And then coolant temp. Both of the analogs, these are for the pressure sensors, like I said, Let me get these out of the way. The injectors are always fun because I like to tuck my injectors and we're going to run them all the way. They're going to run each through the runners and then we will cut them to length as we go. So we'll snip them to length and then that's as long as it'll be. And then when we do our 12 volts, it'll be very easy to do our 12 volts on the table because you'll be able to run it up to the end of this and then run your 12 volts down. So the 12 volt system on the ignitions or on the actual injector system is actually fairly simple. Uh, since the injector is basically just a, it's just a little uh, on off switch. Basically you put a ground to it and it just opens up. Any of the pressure behind it, which is the fuel, the fuel system will put pressure behind it and uh, whenever the actual door opens, it'll push the pressure through it. So the injector doesn't have a load on it and so you can take a 12 volt and then run it to the back and then tie it in. You can have one 12 volt and then fly it off to six injectors. It will not hurt it at all. Injectors do not pull a load. The, they all hold a 12 volt and then when you add a ground to it, it just clicks and they open. So it's not like an ignition system where the ignition system actually holds a charge and you physically take the voltage and it actually has to use the voltage. And uh, if you were to lead off of that and do say six fire or six 12 volts to my six of my ignition coils and then run it to one super thin 12 volt wire it will burn up the wire because there's it's just going to pull way too much load so we're going to do this right through each runner and then we'll be able to snip to uh, size right after we uh pull tight everything behind the cylinder head and everything else uh this is going to be uh pretty straightforward uh, I apologize if you guys are some of them that really like to have a whole bunch of extras. If you're running drive-by wire and stuff, you're going to have probably more than this in wiring to make the drive-by wire system work. It depends on the throttle body, I guess, and then IATs and stuff like that. But here we go. So if you guys watch the ignition coil wiring video, it's going to be exactly the same way. Your ignition coils and your injectors, um, you got injectors one through six. It's exactly as it is pinned on the ECU. If the ECU says injector one, it's injector one. If it says it's injector five, it's injector five. It's very straightforward and there is no, there's no trickery here. Nothing is trying to fool you. And that's very important because this is a rather tedious thing to do if you guys are new to this. Injector six. And now injector six, since it is actually right there on the end, I like to give a little bit of slack for this one also, just so that way the harness can kind of stick down and uh, tuck down a little bit because I like to move my injectors around. So there we go. We have everything all laid out to where we're actually going to want it to go. Um, the only sensor here that's going to actually have all the correct wiring and not have anything added to it is going to be the TPS. As the TPS is, it's a four bar, or it's a four wire sensor from factory, but there's a wire that's not necessary for an aftermarket ECU. So there is three wires going to it, and that is the TPS, five volt, and the sensor ground. Uh, keep in mind the five volt and the sensor ground will actually be tapped into by other sensors, such as the IAT, the coolant temp sensor, and uh, a few other things. So you've also got pressure sensors and stuff like that that will use a sensor ground. And the sensor ground, remember, is the ground that is grounded to the actual ECU. The ground for the ECU is not the same as a chassis ground. So remember that. So you will see that each of my injectors is laid out and each of the injectors only has one wire. That is because the second wire is the 12 volt wire. Just remember that the 12 volt wire is gonna have to be ran afterwards so the 12 volt wire is going to be triggered by a relay or a feet of or the ignition switch inside the car so you'll have a body connector or whatever you want to use at the base of the harness to transfer power into the harness so you're going to want to run those wiring all that wire together that's very important um, the alternator is going to be a separate deal also and um, i will actually run the harness with it as well and the alternator will have a sensor. There's a, a voltage regulator 
the switch for the voltage regulator that's a 12 volt that will turn the regulator on for the regulator to actually work and then deliver 14 volts to the uh, battery. Uh, the second one is going to be the battery light. If you have a battery light on the dash, that's really, really needed. And then there's going to be a sensor, and the sensor is going to be what is sensing to see if there's actually 12 volts or 14 volts or whatever's on the system. So if the alternator says, hey, 15 volts, the regulator will say, hey, back off a little bit. And if the sensor, if the sensor reads 11 volts, it'll say, hey, so it'll say, hey, battery voltage light, turn the light on, the alternator's going bad, something's going on with the battery system. And then the actual third wire is the most important wire, and that's the one that will turn on the regulator. You can get away with that one only, but I like to have the sensor and everything and run the sensor wire to a source somewhere else in the car, and then that will force the alternator to, to do, uh, do its job versus trying to run it directly to the alternator because the alternator can't see what's going on somewhere else. There could be some battery drain issues somewhere, but this is uh, one good way to solve the crisis. So next thing on the agenda is going to be going over to the inside of the car and we're gonna zip tie everything nice and snug. As you can see, all of this wiring down here for the ECU, uh, I wanna pull it a little bit I want this to be able, I want to be able to work on this. So I want this to come out a little bit. It's gonna be very good to have the ECU functional that way. Okay, so we're gonna take these guys tight. We wanna make sure that since they're all gonna be in line, you're gonna end up sleeving this. So you wanna make sure that everything is snug and there's nothing loose hanging on to the actual harness because once you put the sleeving on later on, it's gonna be an issue, and there's gonna be some random loose wire hanging around inside your uh, loom, and you don't want that, because it's ugly, and it just, it's just not right. Okay, so, go up to the firewall. Okay, so the harness is tied there. I'm gonna come back to the front and then we're gonna start tying it at the firewall. Okay, got the harness snugged back there. So now that the harness is all snugged, we've got it pulled like we want it to. This is gonna be basically, or near the end result. I might be able to pull it a little bit further in. Right there will give me some room to work with. I would almost like it to be a little bit longer, which I should be able to have it longer, because like I said, I want it to be in the dash. So ideally, this is a very ideal right here being able to functionally work on this even in the top of the dash like that's that's pretty good for me that's that's where I would want it to be I'm trying to put the HVAC back in so we can have some heat and stuff and still have a uh, nice defrost so that way if it's foggy we can get rid of the fog but next on the list is actually just to start snipping wires into length so really if uh, you want to take this this is a uh, this is pulled tight right this is pulled all the way tight and you don't want it to be pulled tight and the connector be like this you're going to take it and you're going to give yourself some slack you're going to snip it off and it's going to plug in that's that's what you want to do that's uh a very straightforward process doing a wiring harness is uh it's no it's no fast job guys this takes a long freaking time a lot of planning and prep. All right, so now that I've got all these lines, they all the wires are actually pulled out and spread apart, so everything is going into the direction that it's gonna go. I am going to go one by one, and I'm gonna snip them to about the length that I want. So obviously, this right here, this is pulled tight. 
I've got my harness pulled all the way up to where I would want it to be so that way I can maybe service it if I have to. So what I really want to do, you don't want to cut it down here where the connector is. You want to kind of cut it up a little bit to give yourself a little bit of room. It's okay for the harness to slack a little bit. It's not going to drag on the ground so don't worry about that. You do want to make sure that you give yourself a little bit of room and so like this for my cam sensor I am going to want to make sure that I give it plenty of room so that way it can flip up and plug in uh, like so. Uh, this, this lead right here is a little stiff and you don't want it to be so tight that it's going to yank the uh, connector off of the wires. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to probably cut it all the way up here so that way we can uh, plug it in and then just tuck it down. You can see right down there it's not that far down. That's not even halfway down the block. It's okay for it to sag a little bit. Just give yourself some breathing room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these all to the whatever length that I want. And it's okay. Don't, don't, you can use my, you can use my lengths if you want to. But just remember that you're cutting these to the length that you feel comfortable with. Don't cut them too short. Cut them too long, if anything, because too long can always be fixed. You can't add more wire unless you want it to look bad. So the same thing with all the way up here is for my TPS. And so these are dragged all the way out, nice and tight. I will probably cut them about right here. And then it will have some sag, but everything will sag under there. And then at the end of the day, if I really need to, we can do a little zip tie along the rest of the harness and be good.